all of you that are coming for the first time. We are very pleased to have you here. You're welcome, my dear. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad to have you around. Now, I want us to read a couple of places. So can I ask two persons to read for us? And we are going to discuss just something very simple. And I will title it, Be Passionate About Your Faith and Your Calling and Your Ministry. Be passionate about your faith, about your calling, about your ministry. Be passionate about it. In the world today, one of the greatest thing that we are mostly passionate about is making money. We all are very passionate about making money. Please, if you don't like money, can I see your hand? <laughs> all of us do. We are very passionate about making money. And today I want to challenge you to become same as passionate as you are concerning money towards your faith. And I'm building this message based on what you just heard. This is because the earth we are living in is entering a new phase. What was going to happen by the time the war with Ukraine and Russia comes to an end. And then watch how the financial crisis will follow. And then watch how the food crisis will follow. And then you will realize the importance of your faith and your calling. It is now that you establish your faith and make your faith strong. Last night when I was preaching to some other group of people, I spoke about having zeal. The word zeal is taken from the meaning to be highly persuaded instigated highly within you to pursue something this is what i want you to begin to do concerning your faith because everything called religion is about to go down south now i want us to read let's just be in the new testament for today hallelujah can somebody read for us colossians chapter 4 Verse number 17. You have a strong voice. You want to get the mic and read for us. Colossians chapter 4, verse number 17. Go ahead, sir. The book of Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. Read. And say to Archippus. Say to Archippus. Take heed to the ministry. Take heed to the ministry. Which you have received in the Lord. Which you have received in the Lord. That you may fulfill it. That thou fulfill it. Take heed, Archippus. Archippus, in all things, be careful about the ministry that you have received of the law and make sure you fulfill it hmm you may say to me oh pastor ike you are the pastor you have a ministry i don't have a ministry i'm just a believer i just go to church once in my you know entire year when there is a celebration maybe on christmas day i go to church i don't have a ministry you may say, well, I just come to church even though I do every week, but I don't have a ministry. But I want you to know no matter what you think, every living human being born on this earth has got a ministry. It does not matter how small, but you have a ministry. There is something that the Most High has committed onto your hand to do and fulfill for the purpose of the kingdom and for humanity. If you do not fulfill it, then you have made an error of your entire existence. He says, Archippus, take heed. Make sure that you fulfill the very ministry that the Most High has given you. 
And remember what I said in the beginning. I want you to use the same zeal, the same interest that you have in pursuit of money to pursue this. This is because when it's all said and done, Americans will say when the tire meets the road, it's not going to be about money. When you say goodbye and you close your eyes in death, your money will be useless. That time, the question is going to be, what did you do for humanity? And what did you do for the kingdom of the Most High? Have you been taking, taking, taking from humanity and you've not given anything? Have you been amassing, amassing, amassing and you have not distributed nothing? Take heed to your ministry. Let's read another passage, please. First Timothy Verse number 6, I mean chapter 6, verse number 20. Sorry, 1 Timothy 6, 20. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. Mm -hmm. O Timothy, O Timothy, God what has com was committed to your trust. Keep that which has been committed to your trust. Avoiding the profane. Avoid profane idle babblings and idle vain babblings and contradictions mm. and the oppositions or contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge of science falsely so called another translation calls it science mm. in the past three years the mantra had been trust the science mm. trust the science. Trust the science. You gotta trust the science. You know, you have it from different voice tones and different accents, different languages. Trust the science. Amazing. The Bible says, don't trust the science. And this is why Harari told you that the Bible is fake news. Can you see where the opposition is? So he tells you that the Bible is fake news. Because the Bible already told you, don't trust that thing called science. You know, Apostle Shaul or Paul was one of the most educated men in his time. One of the most educated. In fact, when you begin to study the life of Apostle Paul, you find that there was almost nobody as educated as he was in his time. Which was the reason why he had the ear of everyone that he meets. Think about it. Emperors will listen to him. Kings will sit down and listen to him. Generals, people of great positions and authority in the society will sit down and listen to him. The man could speak most of the languages of his days in the Near East, or what was called Northeast Africa, that is now called Middle East. He could speak most of those dialects. The man had understanding of all forms of philosophy, all forms of ideologies that were being peddled in his time. But this is the man that said to us, be careful with that thing called science. Amazing. Isn't that amazing? So he said to Timothy, God, what has been given to you? Because science is going to come to turn it upside down. Mm. And that's exactly where we are today. Yeah. Oh, this man took time to tell you that radio couldn't do it. Mm. He told you that the beginning of the technological affairs of the earth, you know, nobody could imagine where we are today. He tells you that in the next 10, 20 years, the people that will control the world will be those that control your data. Somebody say data. data. Come on now. How many of you have been uploading your data to whatever cloud? <laughs> You've been giving it away free of charge. All your data. Oh yeah, wherever you are. All your biometric information, you are uploading it. Some of you even upload your blood group, your hospital documents, everything. You upload everything. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Mm. 
Please read for us another passage, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, this we're going to read verse 1 to 5. Go ahead, sir. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse yes. 1 to 5. Yes, sir. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to charge all of you listening to me today, before God in heaven and Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. who will judge the living and the dead. Who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom when he appears in his kingdom preach the word preach the word be ready in season be ready in season and out of season and out of season convince mm -hmm. rebuke mm -hmm. exhort mm -hmm. with all Lord sovereign and teaching convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching, yes? For the time will come. The time is gonna come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. When people will no more endure the real teachings. But according to their own desires. But according to their own loss. They have itchy ears. They are going to heap up to themselves. Go ahead. They will heap up for themselves teachers. Mm -hmm. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. They will turn their ears away from the truth. Yes. And be turned aside to fables. And begin to listen to old wives tales. Yeah. But you be watchful in all things. But you Timothy be watchful. Endure afflictions. Endure difficulties. Do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of a preacher. Mm. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Oh my goodness. Mm. I love this verse number five. First is he says be watchful. Watch. One of the most important things we are no more doing in this time is watching. Mm. We are no more watching. We are basically sitting to be entertained. Mm. Think about it. When you come to church, you watch your time. Mm. After 20, 30 minutes, you want to get the hell out. Mm. Mm. But when you go for movies, you can watch things on your phone for hours and hours uninhibited. Mm. <laughs> Think about it. Mm. When you kneel down to pray, you don't last 15 minutes. Mm. And you're done. <laughs> oh yeah, God's gonna understand. But you can go for any other party and be there for hours and mm. So he says, be watchful. Why must you be watchful? Now, if you are partaking in our prophetic studies that we are doing, you realize that watching is an important key for life. Because only a man that is watchful will see what others will not see. Think about it. If this man Harari did not come out to say certain things openly, if I'm the one telling it to you, you will say, all oh, these preachers. These preachers, they just talk anyhow. But lo and behold, he's not a preacher. He hates you. He hates the Bible. He hates God. Cause God fake news. And then he tells you exactly what the Bible said 4,000 years ago. Mm. Or rather, 4,000 years before Christ. Mm. Forgive me. That it will be happening. Mm. Mm. I told you about some of the books that you can read and be shocked. Like the book of Patahotep. Mm. You will be shocked. Books written 5,000 years before Jesus. We're talking about the same things that the Bible said will happen. What the Bible told you years ago is what the man is telling you. And yet he calls the Bible fake news. But then Paul says to Timothy, he says, be watchful. Watch. Watch. If you're not watching, you're not going to catch up with certain things. He says, endure afflictions. Endure difficulty. Notice, that's one thing nobody wants these days. Nobody wants nothing difficult. If you want food, you go to McDonald's. Right? Wait, 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 wait. McDonald's, uh, egg mafia, egg mafia. You know, you, you want it now, give it to me now. Fast. Everything is 
times. Nobody wants suffering anymore. In fact, any preacher that preaches suffering has got no listeners. Mm -hmm. No membership. No. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. Immediately I started teaching about God's laws and commandments. Mm -hmm. Things went south. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I continue to prophesy, that I can do. I can call all of you right now and prophesy over you. You all are going to be happy. Mm -hmm. And you will be shocked what number of people will have here next week. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I have a friend used to be my assistant in school ministry so some years ago when I went to Nigeria I went to his fellowship and you know he was doing all the prophetic and everything and people were everywhere and after all that while I was sitting I was ministered to, to speak to him I said to him bro you know these people love what you do but they don't know God. Mm -hmm. They know you. Mm -hmm. But they don't know the God you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But they know you. Mm -hmm. They love the music. They dance. Mm -hmm. They give the money. But they don't know God. Teach them to work with God. Mm -hmm. He started teaching. Mm -hmm. Immediately he started teaching. Mm -hmm. All those people Mm -hmm. yes, sir. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> mm. and it was done on him it is the same thing he says they will hit to themselves mm. teachers mm. that will tell them what they want to hear mm. they have what they want to hear mm. and unless you say that they want to hear mm. they won't listen mm. but he says Timothy be watchful. And I say to all of you here today, be watchful. Mm. Read another place for us, sir. We have two more places to read and we are done. Because I told you I won't preach long. Mm -hmm. First Timothy chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Notice that we are reading just Colossians and Timothy alone. Mm -hmm. First Timothy chapter 4, 14 to 16. First Timothy chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 14 to 16. Yeah. Do not neglect to feed the gift that is in you. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Which was given to you by prophecy. Which was given to you by prophecy. With the laying on of the hands. With the laying on of the hands. Of the eldership. Of the eldership of presbytery. Mm -hmm. Meditate on these things. Meditate on these. Give yourself entirely to them. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all that your profiting may be appearing to all take heed to yourself mm -hmm. and to the doctrine and to the teaching continue in them continue in them for in doing this for in doing this you will save both yourself the only thing that saves you is the teaching mm -hmm. but you save both yourself uh -huh. and those who hear you the only thing that saves you in the time we are in is the true teaching Mm. That's the only thing that will save you. It's not going to be money. It's not going to be house. It's not going to be anything. Mm. But the true word. So he says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. Now let me also deal with that. It's easy for you to think you have no gift in you. Very easy. This is because our minds have gone through a whole lot of blockage. We have been dampened, blanketed with several issues. Did you hear what that man said? He says the most, the most troubled generation ever is the 21st century generation. He says they have too much issues to deal with. They are bombarded with so many information that they are confused. And it is true, the most confused generation ever in the history of this world is this generation think about books to read they have tons of it they don't know which one to read think of religion they have too much of it in fact christianity has got thousands of variations they don't know which one to follow too many ministers and preachers preaching different things they don't know which one to follow they are confused religiously think about food they are confused clothing they Yesterday we were seeing the new attire of uh, what's the airline again? 
Virgin. Virgin Atlantic. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. You got to see what they are mm. saying is the new way. Mm -hmm. That they are now the leading airline, leading the new airline protocol. Mm -hmm. Still, mm -hmm. confusion everywhere. Go to the school, the students are confused. Their teachers are confused. Mm -hmm. Have you seen our political leaders? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the way they talk? Today they say go left. Tomorrow they say, oh no, go right. In fact, while you are up by the right, make left. <laughs> you don't know which one. To <laughs> the most confused generation is our generation. But the reason is because we have left the teaching, the doctrine of the Bible. Right. We have called it fake news. Mm -hmm. We have called it old and discarded. Mm -hmm. We have said we don't want God anymore. And then we are confused. Mm -hmm. That's why. That's the only reason. Mm. Let me end. Let us read. Second Timothy mm. 1 verse 6. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I remind you to stir up, your, up the gift of God, which is in you. I remind you to stir up the gift. There is a gift in you some of you already know your gift remember where we started from i started from you being passionate being passionate about your calling be passionate about your calling and i said be as passionate as you are when it comes to making money as passionate as you are let it not just be about we the preachers you know I was in Cambodia some time, some years ago, and the preacher, we were sitting, and all of a sudden somebody walked in, and while we were talking, the man was talking about how much he's made, and the preacher said, old boy, you know, you came here for greener pasture, mm. but I did not come here for greener pasture, I came here for greener heaven. <laughs> We all laughed. Mm. It didn't make sense that time. Mm. But I realized when you meet people that love God, mm. they make money and put it back in the kingdom. Mm. 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 It's an amazing thing. It's a crazy thing, actually. Mm. Apostle Paul was a hungry man mm. that did not have money to pay for a hotel room. But the one that they will send to him, he will use to pay for other people's problems mm. and sleep by the wayside. Mm. Isn't that crazy? That kind of a man cannot keep a wife. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being honest. Because your wife will say, what? Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? But because the man was sold to the kingdom, everything he was doing was about the kingdom. Am I saying be like that? Oh no, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying look at what Paul is saying. He says, I put you in remembrance. Stare the gift that is in you. Many of us have left the gift of God and we are not pursuing only the earthly thing. But I am trying to feed your mind and impregnate your mind to come to the understanding and a resolve to know that the gift of God in your life is more important than any other thing you can pursue. Hallelujah. A time in the near future that is coming, you will realize that only that gift of God will bring you closer to the divine. Hallelujah. You need it. You need it. Stir up the gift. Question now is what is the gift? Some of you are gifted in the prophetic. Some of you are gifted with teaching abilities. Some of you are gifted with ability to organize and regulate. Some of you are gifted with kindness, mercy. Some of you are gifted, you know, in even the ordinary job you do. It's a gift. The Bible says a man has nothing except what is given to him to possess in your life is a gift from god and staring it for the betterment of humanity is very important last passage 
2 Timothy 2.2. 2. Second Timothy, two, two. chapter 2, verse 2. Yeah. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. The things that you have heard from me in the hearing of many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men. Don't swallow it and sit on it. Tell others about it. Who will be able to teach others also? The people you must tell are not those that will be selfish. And just keep it to themselves but people that will share it with others the reason why we are able to have the gospel today is because those 12 men sold out themselves and went everywhere communicating what they heard from the Messiah if those 12 men became so selfish and said we're just gonna do it amongst our people only, then we wouldn't have it going around the world. But Jesus says, start from Jerusalem. You know, we always say Jerusalem is your family, your home, but that's not true. These men were all Judeans, in fact, many of them from Nazareth. But Jerusalem was the largest city of their time in their country. So Jesus says, Start from where he's going to make the loudest noise and begin to go to different other places. In other words, make the loudest noise as much as you can. So I love it when some ministers, Reverend Mubai, in those days, when he wants to go for evangelistic crusade, he wants to get thousands and thousands of people. And then in our missions group, in our missions ministry, I always ask you when you talk about opening a church starting a new church i ask are there people there yeah. i want to have human beings yeah. i don't want the church to go and be in the middle of forest <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. hallelujah and then it becomes where two or three are gathered i know that he will be there he's even where nobody can see yeah. he's everywhere but we want it where we're going to have more people affected. Jesus says, start from Jerusalem. Make the loudest of noise. Make the Go to the city. You know, when I went with Ben, see Ben, to where we had crusade in Sierra Leone, when we arrived, even in Manila, when we arrived, he looked at the place, he said, ah, pastor, this place is small. I said, eh? He said, this place is small. I said, really? He said, I, I like it if you can get 10,000 people. <laughs> I said, 10,000 is safe, yeah. I said, that's good. But let us start with this one here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the way he wants to see more people. He will say to me, you know, there is anointing in numbers. Numbers will move anointing. <laughs> I said, hallelujah. <laughs> evangelist wants to see people mm. why because people is the game mm. people is the thing mm. can you imagine if Jesus left heavens where you have uncountable number of angels mm. in different sizes and abilities mm. great and mighty beings so great you can't imagine the Bible says these things are beyond the imagination have you not read it in the Bible it says I has not seen ear has not heard neither has it gone into the imagination of man what is reserved up there you think you have seen anything you've seen nothing Hallelujah. these things Jesus left them ah. and came and died mm. for people mm. How important are you? Mm. How important can you imagine you are? Mm. I charge you therefore, as Paul said to Timothy, you must fulfill your ministry. Yeah. You must fulfill your calling. Yeah. Don't let that devil stop you from fulfilling your calling. Yeah. Because your calling is more important than any other thing. Yeah. Yeah. From next year going, you will see our world begin to turn into some different kind of stuff. 
but let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. Don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Why? He that is in you is greater, mightier, more powerful than he that is in the world. Amen. People are going to be seeing devils. Of course, if you know about CERN, you know that they are perfecting their own game in Switzerland area. So things are going to be happening. Aliens, the man told you that alien presence will become normal. So you're going to be seeing apparitions. This is not Prophet Ike telling you. <laughs> this is a scientist that knows what they have already achieved. Mm. Speaking emphatically. Mm. But the only thing that will put that devil to run is when he sees you. Hallelujah. And you have spent some time on your knees. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. When he sees you, he's going to say, hmm. We'll put her the other side. Yes. Yes. You will become life insurance policy yes. for people around you. Hallelujah. That's why you must learn to pray. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you must learn to pray. Your prayer must go beyond our Father in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Yes. Eh, eh. Yes. Hallowed is already his name. Yes. Hallelujah. Go beyond hallowed. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you must go beyond hallow be thy name you must fulfill your ministry some of you your ministry is so important you are an encourager soon I'm going to preach the preaching that we did 2011 12 which is about how you are wired I want to bring it back as we go through the prophetic teachings mm. so that you learn how to know the presence of the Most High, the presence of an angel, the presence of any spirit around. You learn how to know what is being said, what is being communicated to you. So you will need to understand how your personality plays a role your spirit in this. We have taught you the word. We have taught you the laws and the commandments. Now, we are going into walking with God. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. Moses walked with God. Daniel walked with God. Mary Magdalene walked with God. Elizabeth walked with God. And you that have been hearing me, you must walk with God. Can you lift your hands and say, I, I and put your name there, and David said, I shall surely walk with God in my generation. I will walk with God in the presence of people around me. I will walk with God and be a testimony to the heavens. I will walk with God and bring a change to my community. I will walk with God and walk into his glory. I walk into his glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And we say hallelujah. Ah.